All right, let's try this again. All right. Took me half a second to it did it a little bit differently. I'm like, where's the screen to add a person to be on here with me? What the hell? That's stupid YouTube. It has been a bit of technical difficulties tonight. It's true. Are we live right now? Uh, yeah. When does it say waiting for Robert Norton on the YouTube channel? Weird. Okay. Eh, whatever. It says we're 57 seconds into it. All right. Well, we'll see if we get anybody joined up. All right, there's one person. All right. Well, that's good news. Just some small technical difficulties there. Let's see what I've got. Pretty happy with how the inking's going on that. So far. I actually had a yeah. question I was going to run by Mr. Chuck on it about ink tools here. Oh. Before somebody so rudely tried to call me and interrupted my stream. Who was that? Let's get them on. The it was, yeah, it wasn't even anybody I know. Some like from Ogden, Utah. I'm like, well, who? What? I don't know. Honestly, to be fair, maybe someone's trying to sabotage our lives. Maybe. All right. There's like, it says there's eight people watching now. So at least it, we know it's up. Yeah. Let's see if uh, we get the regulars back. Anybody out there watching? Say hi. They're like, don't tell us what to do. <laughs> like, F you, man. Don't tell us. <laughs> don't fucking tell me what to goddamn do. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, Shogun, have we talked about that? Not yet. Not beyond the uh, texting. Oh, my gosh. I was going to lose it so sorry i'm a little distracted i want to like see if anybody who's watching can come and make sure like we're actually going live because it like again it says there's people watching but i mean i've got it up and it's showing that we're up and live right now okay all right all yeah. right okay tell me if you can see this yeah that's live yeah all right, hey Dan. Yeah, we uh, we were going for a minute, and then we had to restart because first Jessica gets a call and blacks her out, but then she comes back. But then I got a call, and then people could hear me, but it would not come back. Yeah, don't be trying to blame me for your phone call. I'm just saying you put it out there in the universe. <laughs> yeah, Dan says it was a little weird connecting, which is what I was kind of worried about. I was worried there was some like restarting yeah. again. So strange. So odd. Seems good now. Okay. Uh, yeah, but uh, the roommate, she was sitting there like crying because she's like, she can see where this is going. And I'm sitting here going yeah. like, well, I know the story, so... I don't think this is what's supposed to happen when, or at least I know this wasn't in the other TV movie. So I'm like, so maybe they changed it up. Maybe this is really going to happen. Yeah, no, I was like losing it. I was losing it. I almost couldn't watch. And then uh, I don't want to give any things away, but 
when he volunteered, I was like, oh my gosh, shit's really happening. Yeah, yeah. My husband's like, when she's like calling for what's his bucket, and they just shake their head. My husband's like, this is going to be rough. <laughs> I was like, oh no. I really thought that scene where she was like, I'm just going to fucking leave. Oh, oh, what a badass. That was a really tough scene. Like, you know, like, I'm like, oh my God, where are they going with this? Like, I know. Thank you, Starlight. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, I was kind of like, oh. It's like, how far is this going to go? You know? Yeah, it was, it was something. I was, that was a good episode. So you're watching it with your husband? Like, was he right there with you? Yeah. Yeah. And he's still yep. in. This I'm telling you, this is one that he stays awake for. So that, just, that says something. Uh, we're also watching the new Fallout series. I've heard that's good. It's not bad, actually. Which I tend to dislike stuff made about video game from like the video game worlds, you know. Yeah. But no, not bad. Yeah, I didn't even know it was a video game, which goes to show you what I'm what I know as far as gamer because I'm not, and I don't care. But I just heard you that. You know Fallout was a video game? I don't, I don't, why would I know these things? I'm not a gamer. I mean, it kind of, you kind of are. Just because I play Grand Theft Auto online sometimes doesn't make me, like, a gamer. <laughs> I guess it's fair. But you can also play Red Dead Redemption. And... I actually haven't played it in a long time because it that one, like, sucks you into, like, story. And, like, you want to go do the story stuff. And so I've kind yeah. of avoided it until I could sit down and play it for real, um, like, all the way through. Yeah, this Fallout show is, honestly, it's it it's gory, it is graphic, there is language, there is, new, there is all of it. But it's amazing. It's so good. I actually feel like they're doing a good job. I don't like it better than Shogun so far, but they're different, so it's hard to compare. Yeah. Uh, Daniel says, I dug the Fallout show. Yeah. <laughs> no pun intended. Um, G Gashi, keep up the great work. This is some awesome art. Starlight is asking, What pins are you using? If you're asking me, I am just using Micron pins. It's a brush pin from Micron. Um, I don't know what you're using. You're using one of those fancy ones you told me I could not use. I told you you couldn't. You said you said you'll. Uh, Whitney is my witness. You said it. You said you're not going to be able to do this, Jessica. Get off of this live. You're too. You're too much of a shitty artist. Oh, the lies are rich <laughs> and funny. I. Probably said you would be frustrated and not like it. <laughs> I used to have, I mean, from what I understand, I always called them calligraphy pens. I had those ones um, with ink uh, to do calligraphy in school. And um, I never even considered that you would use them for art. And I can only imagine personally that they would be a pain in the ass to use until you learned how to use them properly. Well, I mean, again, you gotta have to have the right tip. Um, you know, you gotta have these right, the the specific drawing tip. So yeah, they're they're called. Uh, I mean, I don't, just a dip pen, but this is the they come in different numerical sizes as far as the drawing tips. This is a one oh seven, which is a much rigid, more rigid one. The standard is a one oh two for comic art because it's a lot more flexible. You get mm. more out of it. But I've tried this one oh seven and. Um, um, it lasts a little longer because it's thicker metal. So it's like I said, it's more rigid. So it doesn't flex as much, but it stays alive a little bit longer because you're not flexing the shit out of it, um, getting your lines on there. But you also, it, you're a little bit more limited in what you can get out of it. So it, I'm just using it in like this smaller drawing with this guy's got a lot of hairy, furry texture on his body. So 
It actually looks works great. This. I'm actually having fun with this drawing I'm doing right now. This one right here. I'm like, oh, this one's all right. I'm having fun with this. Yeah, it's um, it's actually really looking really good. It looks like fun, even though I know I personally wouldn't have fun. It looks like fun. But I, th I think you would have fun once you kind of figured it out. I, th I feel like you would enjoy it. I kind of like the way this one was coming out with the ink. This was all my actual brush. And I kind of liked it. No, it, it was looking, or is looking good. But I'm afraid to do the detail parts with the brush. <laughs> and yeah. That's my only. Um, Starlight says, looks like nice pens. Are they ink? Ten, yeah, I, so the, the micron pens, they are ink. Um, uh, you, but they're, you know, the ink is in the br pen. When it runs out, it runs out. You, what you're using, you're dipping into your ink well, right? right? Well, I got just a bottle in my hand right now because there's very little ink left in it. So I have to like <laughs> get it at an angle and dip all the way to the bottom to get ink on the tip of my pen here. If when this, when these bottles are brand new, I don't hold it in my hand like this because I'm, I'm kind of moving around. And when there's so little in there, there's very little chance of it spilling. But mm -hmm. it's, you can hold it right next to you because it's right here as opposed to across the way on my little table over here it just you can get a little quicker so i always dump mine in this little jar thing and i hold it it's a disaster i know don't judge me but maybe that's my problem <laughs> i don't use as much ink as you know i've never had a jar of ink be close to empty <laughs> really <laughs> uh no i had one many years ago i actually bought with you and um, oh. it was still mostly full because I kind of had quit attempting inking. And for a while, I was inking and using Copic markers on everything. And um, <laughs> Chuck says, the more you talk about it, the more you jinx yourself with the ink gods. He's I'm, he's 100% right. I'm sure I'm just tempting fate over here, like holding it <laughs> He's like, just watch, buddy. It's going to fucking get everywhere any second now. Oh, I'm laughing. Um, but no, I had, a, I had a, a bottle and I just had it in my art supplies in a pantry that was kind of by my kitchen. And I hadn't used it forever. And then one day... Uh, Oh, oh! It took me forever to clean it. It seriously, it stained so bad. Yeah, this black ink doesn't want to come out of nothing. Nope. Easy. Chuck, while I got you on the horn, there, buddy. Um, when you would use to use dip pens like this, did what did you do in between inking? Um. Like, would you always pull the nibs out of the holder and store them separately? Uh, I mean, sometimes if I, it's like I've had the nibs get stuck in here and it's probably a lack of like properly cleaning them, like, or not letting, <laughs> I, I let, I'll dip them in the water and shit and the water, the inky water will get all the way up where the, the pen nib connects to the the holder but then i've had times where like the nib is still useful but it's just like it's like lacquered in there and so i'm like pulling it out but then pulling it out i end up busting it up so i end up trying to like pull the nibs out of the holder and store them separately in between using them i'm just curious of what you would use to do back in your handheld like traditional ink glory days He's still in his glory days, Rob. That's why I said traditional ink. I was very specific to edit that. Because... Well, I am still going to say it. I'm just kidding. All right. All right. All right. All right. I actually sit here and had the same thought. I'm like, word this in the right way. And I have to be like a complete jerk. You got to be a bitch. 
<laughs> yeah. And I have to go be a bitch. Exactly. But yeah, that was me. I don't feel as bad as you might think. <laughs> Do you play what? I said, I, you, said you're, you said something about me being a bitch, and I said, I don't feel as bad as you might think. Um, right? <laughs> I'm just like I'm moving this around a lot. I wonder if it's um, Starlight says I love Joe. You know my daughter. She's actually a she loves drawing anime characters. Um, she really loves gel pens and using them as well. Which she'll take them over her sketch she's worked on forever and just doodle over it and color it and shade it with them and which I find pretty brave if you're gonna be an artist Jessica you gotta be fearless <sighs> I'm not <laughs> if I was an artist like I used to be where I had nothing but oodles of time to myself to draw whatever I wanted all the time and not have to worry about it I would be braver that's fair. But I don't, and so I don't want the stuff that I just did all the stuff. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce this. Plasma crazy? Plasma? Is that plasma crazy? I mean, okay. it looks like a variation on the word plasma. That's what I was thinking, but I didn't want to... I'll let you throw it out there. I'll let you do the reading of the, the names I can't pronounce. <laughs> Um, you persuaded me to draw a smiley face. Well, that's always good. Mm -hmm. Get out there and draw, y'all. Do it. I'm excited because I have a long drive and I might just sit and draw for some of it. Depending on how bumpy the road is. <laughs> so you're driving to where you're going. <laughs> yeah. Imagine tickets for my entire family. To Indiana, right? Or mm-hmm. 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 What drive does that take? Because you've done it a couple times. So it's a 24-hour drive. Fuck that. <laughs> what kind of vehicle do you guys travel in? Oh, you know. Well, we've never taken this one. It's the new suburban. We'll see how we go. It's going to be yeah. expensive AF, but still uh, flying is more expensive. So expensive on gas? Yeah, I'm sure it'll be expensive on gas. Yeah. I mean, pulling our trailer was down to Moab was so expensive. I don't, I couldn't even believe it, so. Starlight wants to know, how did you start your channel, Rob? How did I start my channel? I just uh, to, decided to start talking about comics and turned on the the phone, like the just recorded a video and started talking about it and just started uploading stuff. And a little over a year now later, here we are. That's, that's it. I mean, it was just kind of something I'd thought about, something Jessica here had kind of also additionally kind of encouraged in me and I didn't think I that it think plenty of I didn't Bobby also say that you should do it I don't, or, I don't now she was like you'll never be a, a star <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> no, don't even try or I'm like <laughs> even now she's like it's your 15 minutes of fame yeah I'm just, I'm just putting words in her mouth <laughs> hey yeah. How you doing? Uh, I was on his channel a couple a uh, couple weeks ago. I I think you said you watched that. Where I were... did yeah. for Ed's. Yeah, yeah. It was right I... when you know that whole thing happened. So that was that's that timing. You know, sucked just because it was like it was a downer for everybody. But. Mm -hmm. 
So yeah, Starlight, if you, you you know, just start, just start going, you know, if you want to make it successful, which, you know, I guess it depends on what that means. Um, I had no intentions of this thing becoming quote unquote successful, but um, I'm about 70 subscribers away from 3000. Which is crazy to me. I mean, not because I don't think you're, you're, don't get me wrong. I, I see why it's like that. It's just still kind of unreal to think about that you're at that point. That's, that's how I feel. I'm like, yeah, we might have to, again, when you're back and ready and in, in, depending on your interest, I was thinking like, oh, well maybe at 3000 ish or right around there, we do like another like Q and a thing. Yeah, let's do it. Where we talk. I mean, I always think it's fun just to be able to go on live and we just, where people can see us and we just talk. It's just, it's just kind of fun. So not to volunteer you for anything, but I, I think I just did. You did. It's fine. You can volunteer me for stuff. You're like, fine. fine. If I don't want to do it, I'll just stand you up and not show up. Like, oh. Greg <laughs> says, oh boy, I'm sorry. You were subjected to my YouTube channel. No, no, it was great. It was great. I sat, I truthfully, I was de-junking and I sat and I just listened and the conversation, it was really nice. I thought, and of course it was, you know, kind of because of when it happened, you had to touch on the subject of Ed and it was, it was nice. I thought, you know, even though it was kind of a sad subject, it was not kind of, it is, it was nice. Yeah, no, I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a lot, Grant. So uh, I appreciate it a lot. So thanks thanks for asking. You're literally the first person to ever ask. Well, now there was one other guy who um, um, Jimmy Ray is, um, who's a really good artist and got a really successful channel. He's like, you should, we should, we should do a live together sometime, Rob. I'm like, oh, shit. So it wasn't like, hey, let's do it now. It was just like, we should do it sometime. Mm. yeah yeah you were definitely the first one i've ever jumped over onto grant and uh where i was kind of asked by somebody and i was like yeah sure i'll yeah let's do it that's cool so much appreciated very very neat Yeah, we should definitely do that. I would absolutely be down. I always think that's kind of fun. And I think people always, especially as you get new followers, you know, they may not have seen the last one that you've done. So it's always fun to yeah, kind of a get to know you thing. Yeah. I like yeah. it. Chuck says Jimmy's a cool cat. He really is. I actually uh, also uh, ordered his book, That Dragon Fire. So I'll be, uh, I'll be getting that out and looking at it. But yeah, Jimmy threw out kind of like a, it's like, we should get together and we should do a live together. I'm like, well, hell yeah. I'm, it, it's super intimidating. Cause he's a million miles above me as an artist, like for real. And that's not me trying to be like fake hum- humility or anything. Like he's legitimately profoundly good. And I'm just wow. like, Oh God, <laughs> it's just intimidating when you're like, you're trying to do a thing, but then you have another person who's like, successful and good at it and you could just look at their stuff and you're like oh god this guy can this guy can do this <laughs> so yeah ugh, it's just intimidating <laughs> no i uh i think you should still do it you know you're intimidated because you're also an amazing artist and to be fair your world's above me in art and i do this twice a week so no excuses <laughs> like so grow a set rob yeah no excuses at all. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Speaking of which, though. Yeah. Jessica's gonna, got to bounce. <laughs> I'm going to have to jump off here. Um, I have to take a test tonight. A school test, just to be clear. And uh, Well, we thought it was a drug test, to being honest. So. That's what it sounded like, to be honest. That's what I, I heard. i got to go piss in a cup. Yeah. I have this in a cup, guys, so I'll see you later. No. Um, but uh, thanks for having me on, even for the short period of time. Yeah, and, I'm gonna, uh, for a little bit longer. Um, yeah. Yeah, Chuck's saying glad he, he glad he got to catch you for the few minutes you were here. 
Yeah. Bye, Chuck. Thanks for for joining and everybody else who did. It was awesome. Here's my flowers for anybody wants to see. Oh, oh damn. <laughs> you really moved on those. <clears throat> see you later. Yeah, yeah, I'll stay on. Um, so I guess if any of you are out there, um, I guess we could, if anybody else want to jump on with, take Jessica's spot. I'd have to get your, uh, your number to connect up with if I don't have it. Someone saying he's in lurking mode because someone else is watching this over his shoulder. Oh shit, Grant! You said you didn't. You don't know if you told me that you went to Ed's funeral, like, like the actual funeral, or like a. Uh, I know there was they were planning like a, uh, like a memorial or something like that. Um, I would actually be really interested to hear what that was like, Grant. If if you're open to sharing here or some other place or if you prefer but um yeah that's yeah i'd like to hear about that i know we've said it before but that whole situation just still makes me sad How many people were there, Grant? Was it like, I mean, not like a number or a count, but like, was it a lot of people? Was uh, was Jim Rugg there? That's the thing that keeps coming up in my mind is whatever happened to that poor son of a bitch. Like, I just imagine you feel so terrible, like everyone else in his family surrounding him, of course. But um, I just keep wondering what he's going to do. So yeah, it was jam packed. Yeah. God, if only that guy could see now how much people uh you know were there for him. See, I can't imagine that there would be hard feelings between, um, you know, Rug and the family. I mean, I know we made that post about having to separate, you know, but I, I think everyone could probably see the situation that was going on and probably understand why he had to do what he did. Holy shit, my roommate just showed up and she's got like multiple packages in the mail for me. Oh shit. I think this is a uh, Image Grand Design right here. I guess I shouldn't be showing addresses. Image Grand Design. I've never got so many in one time. Um God, I'm not sure what this is. And this, oh my god. I got to put my ink down before I spill it. Sorry, Grant. I, I'm not trying to distract. I'm actually really interested. Um, oh, shit. Yeah. This is my uh, my package of uh, 10 or 11 copies of um, Ghost Agents that I have my book in. Or I've got my pages in this book. We might have to do a live unboxing right here. I should actually do a whole separate video. But God damn. 
This is the first time my work has been put into another comic book. It's in this shit right here. Oh, very heavy. Um, yeah, anyway, Grant, I was just saying that, um, you know, I think everyone would understand why Jim Rugg would have to say what he had to say when he saw how bad it was for Ed. I put out the theory that um, Ed probably told Jim to do it. But then, of course, that, that note that Ed left kind of makes you think otherwise, so maybe not. Anyway, but I bet you Jim feels terrible. Because he's like, maybe if I hadn't have done that, maybe if I stood with my friend, maybe that would have been the one little thing to keep him around. Like, who knows? God, you just, I can't imagine him not having every kind of terrible thought. So, geez, so miserable. Well, I'm glad you got to go to it, Grant. That's, that's fantastic. Like, you know, you get to be part of that and pay respects to the guy. Just wish he would have stayed around. It's hard watching those old videos and hearing his voice talking. I still got everyone here. Am I, am I still going? Oh yeah, Dan, you say you haven't been able to watch the new videos. Yeah. yeah I mean, it's really surreal. I feel like those guys had a lot of ba a huge backlog of stuff. I wonder how long it'll go for, um, you know, before they run out of content. Hey D man. Yeah, Jessica had to take off. She's got vacations and trips and school and shit to plan on. So we have to squeeze an hour out of her. So that's all we get. Yeah, Grant, I was just saying, I think it's awesome that you got the opportunity to go to that thing and, you know, how unfortunate that whole thing is, but at least you got to kind of go be part of it. What you making for dinner, Grant? Because depending on what it is, we all might be over. Oh, is that this this coming Saturday, Grant? The the memorial at the local comic shop. Oh man, that would be. I hope everyone in the universe shows up. You know.
You're making salmon in a white wine lemon sauce. You son of a bitch. That sounds fantastic. All right, everybody. Show up at Grant's house. He's making dinner. I've gotten good at cooking steaks up actually myself. It's one of my favorite things to do, especially now that I'm on the carnivore diet. So Oh, what's up? I am awesome, you're not. Well, thanks, man. Um, I see you're talking about this one where they're getting blown away up here. I was inking this one earlier, and I had a lot of fun with this guy. This was actually a lot of fun to do. I'm kind of mad that it's over. I mean, I get a, I get to draw this guy a lot more. I'm about to have a big old throwdown between Beast Man and He Man here, but um, I was having fun with that. But uh, God, I'm kind of distracted with all these comics that just come in in the mail that my roommate just dropped off to me. I didn't know they were in the mail or I would have got them when I got home from work, but I think I might need to pop them open right here on camera real quick first. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm going to put my ink away so I don't spill it because as Chuck was saying, I was tempting the uh, ink gods by flailing that around. But first things first. All right. You know what's great about getting comics in the mail is when they send out these cardboard mailers. It becomes something that I get to recycle and use when people buy my shit, and I can send it, send them back out secured. What is in this one? Oh, right! I forgot I even backed this thing. Oh, look at that! You get to see live. This is the. Uh, I got the naughty cover. Boy, that is really graphic. <laughs> wow. Oh my gosh. And a bunch of extras. I forgot that I ordered this comic. Um, I got the digital rewards quite a while ago. I remember looking inside it and kind of like going, eh, it's, like, it's all right. But the cover, holy Lord, that is just... All right, well, that's one. That's the most adult one. <laughs> Like I said, I forgot that I ordered that. Yeah, these mailers, 100%. Yeah, I, uh, because when I get my book done, I'll be sending out a bunch of them. And I'm like, ugh, it's so nice to just have these things. Chop this up. I got to remember to not show my damn address. I mean, I guess I don't care. I'm nobody. But might as well be careful. All right, hell yeah. I know what this one is. Yes. Image Grand Design. 
I wanted to be part of this so bad, but, uh, God damn, is that a hell of a, wow. It says down here, many thanks to Rob Liefeld for bringing us Phantom Force. He, his continued work, along with Jim Rugg, Ed Piscor, and Jack Kirby, are always inspirational. Well, that's fun. Well, damn, I can't wait to uh, get into this thing. Grant, you've got the digital version, but not the print. Yeah, Rocco, who uh, kind of was spearheaded this thing, um, he just put on social media recently. He had one extra copy. Does anybody want it? I'm like, fuck it. Send it to me, man. Yeah. I am awesome. You say explicit comics, man. I had to hide my Faust when I was a kid. They were so crazy awesome. I to make sure my mom didn't find them. Probably would have been banned from all comics. Yeah, that's for sure. Image Grand Design, a story concept initiated by one, Ed Piscor, with aid from Jim Rugg, ultimate love letter to our founding fathers, McFarlane, Liefeld, Larson, Valentino, Sylvester E. Jim Lee, the likes of which came together and changed comics forever. All right, Grant, go go cook your fish, man. Don't Don't burn it. Damn, that is a great picture of Spawn right there. Holy Lord, that is pretty badass. It's the first time I've seen a Spawn image, and I'm like, okay, that one's cool. Yeah, this is going to be so fun to go through. Holy crap. I know they did it on the, the Kayfabe channel, but um, Oh, okay. <laughs> the fish is in the oven, so now you can concentrate. Gotcha, 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 brother. <clears throat> Excuse me. Anyway, um, yeah. All kinds of neat stuff. Well, this is certainly getting a, a video, of course. Uh, I would have loved to have drawn a page in this, get to draw all the Image Comics characters. I think I could have contributed. <laughs> Shadowhawk, such a lame character comic, and I liked Valentino. I've kind of always said that uh, Shadowhawk wasn't really a Valentino character. It, it feels like it's just like a a response to needing to do I image comics, like 90s era type comics. He's like, well, there are characters that like have, you know, dark costumes with shiny points and blades and knives and shit. So I'll create a character. And he, yeah, he stabs people in the back. That's what we do. That's what the kids were into. All right. So that's the, the, the first two. My uh, adult comic and then my image grand design. This other one, this giant box. I'm really, really, really excited for this one. Oh, God. Ugh. Yeah, Grant, you'd like to see him resurrect normal. It's normal man from what I recall. Not normal guy, a normal man. Um, yeah. But yeah, this one right here, this should be the ghost agents, which I, um, I've done a video on two of their books and I was blown away by what these guys did. And I hit up Rocco one time. It was about a year and a half ago, honestly, not last December, but the December before. And I asked him if I could be part of it somehow. And he's like, all right, I'll try you out, you know? And, um, gave me a 
I can't remember if it was a six or an eight page story. And um, let me draw it. And then once they did a Kickstarter for it. Oh, hell yeah. And they paid me a page. I got a hundred, a hundred bucks per page and they've, they paid it out. You know, I made, Oh God. Yeah. I made, I made money doing work for once. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yep. But I ordered, they gave us the opportunity because I don't just get my one copy of the book right here. They, uh, I ordered, I've got 10 copies so I can sell a couple of them. <clears throat> so if uh, anybody's interested, I have copies of these. That is a pretty epic cover. Holy shit. I'm going to reposition the camera here. It's be like an impromptu video for the channel. Uh, I mean, I'm going to do like an official one. Metropolis. And then flip cover, Ghost Agents. Chuck Stagg giving plenty of indie pages for a $100 page about 15 years ago. Yeah, it was a... Uh, I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll do that. And they even put up my artwork in the Kickstarter campaign. If anybody wanted to like, as part of a reward tier and they're like, we, can you offer up any artwork? I'm like, I'll offer up the entire fucking set of pages. And somebody bought a page. I don't know who or for how much, but so I had to ship off a piece of artwork for the first time. Um, because somebody bought it from a kickstarter campaign so all right i'm just gonna do a quick flip through and uh the nice thing the interesting thing about this is one is a super oversized um i forget the the name for the size of it but you can see the size of it um if you can see as compared to a regular comic but um yeah <clears throat> But it's on newsprint, which is something you never see anymore. And so it gives everything this really interesting look. <laughs> Someone invite Rob Liefeld into the stream. Um, yeah, he would never. He would never. I'm not on mine. So, yeah. Um, and my pages were left black and white as opposed to color. So once we get, so I'm going to see my work in black and white, but then they also had somebody do some like, like monotone blue tones over my black and white artwork. And I've actually never seen it yet. I haven't even, I've seen one page that I thought looked pretty good, but I've never actually seen the final version. So God damn, this is some neat looking stuff. There's something about the newsprint, the way the, the coloring like prints on these <clears throat> oh shit yeah right here oh man this is way more elaborate this is my first page right here so for anybody who you know gives any kind of a shit this is this is brand new this is my work printed in this book for the first time ever and this is my first time seeing it. The, the version that I saw just had a couple of streaks of blue, not this like whole tone with the blues and the yellows. Holy shit. This is the first time I've seen this. This is the page that I sent off because they didn't specify what page they wanted to buy. So I'm like, what should I send? They're like, send any of them. I'm like, well, I guess I might as well send the splash page opening. But I also ordered a print of this. I wonder when that'll show up. Um yeah, this was uh, oh thanks, nice moss on the trees. I I had to look up some reference because it's supposed to be in the the bayou, you know, um, in 1977. So I did some dry brush kind of hanging stuff. I had to reference. I hate drawing motorcycles. I hate drawing vehicles. <clears throat> All right, God, I have no idea what the rest is gonna look like. I'm actually kind of like nervous because again, this is my. They never bothered to send me final versions of these toned pages. I could have asked. So here's page two. Looks just like 70s moss, right? 
Wow, this is just a whole new thing to me. You're going to have the CCR song stuck in your head, man. That's uh, Creedence Clearwater is one of my favorite bands. Um, God, that's neat. You know what? I'm not sure who actually did the tones. It's probably on the last page. We'll get to it. I mean, I think I know. I'm not sure. I was trying to do like a whole Jim Lee kind of Psylocke jumping through the air, kicking, swinging a sword kind of homage here. Um, I like what they did with these monsters in the dark with the little glowing eyes. Huh. I don't know. I'm kind of like embarrassed to show this because I'm like, I just see everything I did wrong. <clears throat> Wow, sorry, I'm not trying to be quiet, but I'm just like taking it in for the first time. That's what she said. Um, interesting. I like what they did. I got to be honest, whoever did this. Um, yeah. It's nice when, I mean, it's one thing when someone else is doing work over your 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 own artwork and you've. I have no idea who it is. They didn't ask my permission or get my approval or anything. Not that they need to. But you're like, I hope they know what they're doing. And um, I am not upset at anything that I've seen. Just makes me feel like I uh, maybe I could have done better on my own. This, this panel was a pain in the ass, but I kind of feel like it kind of worked where everything's tilted on the side. She's rushing out the doors. <clears throat> that was a... Uh, all right, figure out the perspective and don't fuck it up, Rob. The pages, so, well, again, they, um, um, in the Kickstarter, it, they just had a tier where it had a picture of all my pages laid out and you could buy however many, one or two or all of them. And one person bought one page. And when they hit me up, they're like, hey, you want to send a page? Um, I'm like, well, what page did they buy? And they said that they didn't specify. So like, I, they're like, you could send any page you wanted. So I sent the page one. <clears throat> yeah, you, I mean, I kind of agree. It would have been kind of nice to be kept in the loop. But I mean, you know, they paid me. And then the last page. You know, it says Rocco Jerome Story and Rob Norton Art. I did not do these tones. I'm going to have to hit them up. I think it's the guy who runs this thing. Um, Eli, I think it's Eli Schwab, I think, did it. Um, just, there might be a credits page in the back of these. They tend, to, they've done that before. Um, this shot with the low angle and the building going up, that was, uh, that's me figuring stuff out. Thanks, Mat Mat Matviel. Danilovich, if I said that right. Uh, well, thanks. Um, I just, again, I look at it and I'm not trying to be humble, but I'm like, I, ugh, I feel like I could have, I always feel like I could have done better, but I don't hate it. Um, yeah, this is, a uh, God, this is fun. Daniel Bedrosian says, been enjoying your videos. Good stuff always. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Sebastian Adano, would you consider having Masters End colored this way? I actually would. Um, I've seen in some of these other Ghost Agents book, there was another guy who did a, a section that it was like the most beautiful artwork I've seen in any of those, where it was black and white artwork, and then it was colored with two tones, with a blue and a yellow. And I thought it looked amazing. Way better than my stuff. But... Um, this would be something. Um, yeah. Gosh. Ah, it's so fun to get to look at this. Kind of flip through it kind of quickly some more. Just to kind of go through it. But just look at the way they make this. It looks like old comics in newsprint, which is, uh, it's on newsprint, but they also put these textures on these dots and stuff to intentionally make it look like old school. And I love it. I, I didn't realize how much you'd love something that would f seem to feel like old crappy printing technology, but then you get nostalgic for it. 
what does it say? Cuckoo, Valkyrie agent of ghost agents. Jesus. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, gosh, neat stuff. I just feel like they really go all out on these things. I love the giant book. What, what's it? Is it, I don't know, is it prestige format where it's just this huge, it's much bigger? <clears throat> That's pretty awesome. That's a pretty sweet kind of graphic image. I mean, the, I guess the perspective on the handles off when the handles turn sideways, but the wheels flat, but that's neat. Let's see. Let's keep going. That's a neat image. I like that. Yeah, Matt, Matt Veal, again, I hope I'm saying your name right. Comics look much better on pulpy paper. The classic stuff reprinted doesn't look right on the newer glossy paper. You're 100% correct. I agree with that every way. Um, I'll pick up reprints of books, and I'm like, I have the old book from 1989 or 1990 on old newsprint, and then they reprint it. I'm like, this reprint sucks shit. And it's like, it's that old paper. This is, I think they're reusing their artwork because this was in, but look at this guy's work. Um, Barry Tan is the name of this guy. I love his drawings. And then these tones on this look so good. Like this to me looks, I just, I love the way this looks. Chuck, you like the omnibus books mostly, the big kind of collections where you get everything in like in a big collection. That's definitely a way to go. Um, man, I love the way this looks. Cosmic y space stuff. Yeah, see, this was printed in one of the previous books, but they've changed it. They made it intentionally blurry. That's not my phone. <laughs> Go and blurry. It's almost like, is it supposed to be in 3D? That's really I I think it is supposed to be in 3D. I got I gotta dig out some 3D glasses. I'm almost positive this is supposed to be. So it looks a little blurry. Um interesting love that that black and white drawing right there old classic style kind of like soft feminine features <clears throat> an old like space sci-fi like 50s era kind of sci-fi that looks neat that's a great image right there wow I've, and i've seen this in black and white That looks neat right there. Yeah, this is a, also, this section of this story is a reprint from a previous one where the girl, she uh, she's on drugs and fighting bad guys, but she's hallucinating. So they do this artistic thing to represent her being high as shit like i can't remember what it says she took but this is her just like high fighting bad guys but they're represented as monsters um i thought it was really interesting really well done yeah see she's done and once she kind of comes back to her sense there's just a bunch of these bad guys here just murdered wow Some Bruce Lee love going on there. Oh, shit. These are cool. Character design sheets. That's interesting. I like this image where a lot of it's kind of blown out. Um, you're only getting 
parts of it. Face looks great. <clears throat> just a lot of stuff in this to to get to see. Of course, they have the obligatory hot girl to sell their, their merch, like T-shirts and shit, which I'm not saying that as a negative. Get a hot girl, put her in your T-shirt on top of a bar, giving you the, the stink eyes. An actual story to read. I don't want to read. Oh, that's awesome. That's really cool. That's really interesting. Okay, so it's a flip book. So I guess this Metropolis, like that old movie that I've never seen went into the uh, public domain. And so they did a book with the characters. Um, that's great. Oh, wow. Look at this cityscape. Yeah, Matville, uh, Metropolis is one of the few silent films you've actually seen. I need to see it. I need to give it a shot one of these times. I'm, I'm aware of it, but I've never seen it. Thanks, Grant. Yeah, man. Thank you. Uh, yeah, D-Man, they went old school. They did. Um, I think this looks really good. Again, I have no idea what the story is about from the original source material, but... Love this close up of these eyes. That's creepy. I think it's really good artwork, too. This is interesting. I wonder if this is all done by hand because getting these like circle shapes with this grainy, almost looks like ink splatter, but I wonder if this is digital or done by hand somehow. Guess you could tape it off. Thanks, Grant. You say you like my show. It's always you always forget it's on. Um, I'll write it in my calendar for next week so I can watch the whole episode. Yeah, I'll do one Sunday night too, uh, maybe by myself because Jessica's going to be out of town. But um, I usually do them Saturday nights and then Thursdays in the afternoons. Yeah, Manabat vibes. I could see that. Yeah. Say they're just retelling the movie plot. Read this. You don't have to watch it. Well, if I read this, maybe it'll help me understand the thing when I see it. This is some crazy neat. I can't get over how much I love this newsprint and the coloring on it. That's really neat. Wow. Yeah, well, that's basically, you know, a flip through the whole thing. 
Um, yeah, I'm really, really uh, happy to be in this thing. Um, and I'm not completely embarrassed by uh, what I did. And it certainly helps that they uh, did some fun tones in this. But it doesn't list a, a table of... Con well, they, they usually have like a list of uh, the creatives in it. Like a whole page dedicated to who did what. And I wanted to get proper shout out. I'll have to just mex uh, message them. You can say message or text them and it comes out Mexican them. Um... And ask who did this because I, I think it looks good. God damn! If I think these would have could have been a lot more interesting if uh, if I had Chuck working with me at the time, he could have inked them for me. Wow. Well, yeah, that was fun. Well, everyone got to see. Yeah, and I got 10 copies of it so I can sell my own. Well, that was fun. For some reason, I wasn't expecting them to show up so soon. But, uh, well, I mean, granted, I did the artwork a year and a half ago. So, Well, thanks. I am awesome. I uh, it was it was fun. <laughs> yeah, if they told me Rob Liefeld did the gray tone or the the color tones on that, that'd be just the greatest thing ever. Can you imagine? You see that Liefeld's doing a new Kickstarter for his Evangeline comic to reprint a bunch of the old books, especially now that it's been optioned for a movie with major director and stars. It's got to put it out there in the universe. And they made $15,000 goal within a couple hours and still got a month to go. So good for him. You love Liefeld. I appreciate that. You know, he's he's not my cup of tea. His older work is, not his newer stuff. But, um, you know, I'll never begrudge anybody having their likes, what they like. Yeah, his early work um, is is the stuff that I prefer. The very tail end of New Mutants and the early X Force. Well, pretty much all the X Force, um, and that's kind of it for me. Where I can look at it and kind of still like it. I feel like he just lost everything that was interesting, especially when he stopped inking himself and got guys like Danny Meeky and. John Sabal, who are all good inkers, they're all fine inkers, but it doesn't make Liefeld's work look the best that it can. <clears throat> Again, that's my opinion on it. And then I know he inks, his, he does all his own artwork for the most part, he inks himself, but I just don't like it because his drawings, he's not even, it's the same five poses 
over and over and over. And I just, I just, I can't. Pencil, pencil. Matthew Moreau, you say that's very nice of what you're doing. If, if you're talking about just the, the drawing, I um, appreciate that. Thank you. Appreciate that very much. Dan Goodwin, if you're still in there, um, I know I've said this and you're not pushing on me, but uh, I, uh, I definitely do plan, obviously, obviously, I'm going to get your, uh, your new issue of your book up on the channel. I've just suddenly got a, I got a pile of books that uh, some independent creators have sent to me, not just these ones I showed now, but I got like a whole like eight issue series from a guy uh, about a week ago. And, and uh, so I just want to know if you're still in there, Dan, I will, it will go up there. It's just exactly when is a little bit up in the air. <clears throat> well, thank you, Matthew. Um, I mean, I like inking. Um, I, I'm not as good as I wish I was, so I do appreciate it. <clears throat> well, I appreciate it, Dan. I know you're. I know it's no rush, but I also know it's like it, it for for me. You know, I'd be like, um, it it puts it out there, and then maybe sends a little business people's way, and I'm happy to do that. That's one of the things I feel like is an important part of it. I want to send eyes your direction. And if it helps you move some books, then I'm, it's, it's great, you know. So funny as I feel awkward sometimes doing these without Jessica there because there's always someone to talk to. So someone or something to fill up dead space. So I'm like, I'm not interesting. And then that's why I wish that I could play. Or I mean, 
you have to be kind of cautious of what kind of music to play because the YouTube algorithm will be like, copyrighted music. You can't do that. Talk about the um, Minka. You talk about this one up here. Yeah, I've got another one to throw up here. There, uh, it's a follow-up page to this panel where they were in this cave in the mountains, and there's this massive explosion. Um, boom! Giant explosion, and then um, yeah, these guys were amidst the rubble and everything, so they're flying through the air. <clears throat> so yeah, that's what's going on there. Yeah, that explosion. See, it started out here where Beast Man jumps and attacks He-Man, and they go tumbling down through this opening to the cave. And so it leaves the, the three girls. You got Eve, She-Ra, and then uh, Tila here to take on the evil witch here. And so she's like, all right, well, she did. She was able to uh, pull off her her great her great master plan. She's like, and are you ready to see her master plan? Which is why she does this big kind of energy burst right here. And then, boom, blows up everything. And so the girls are protected in an energy bubble from Tila, who's now the sorceress. So she's protecting him in this explosion. But He-Man and Beast-Man go flying through the air. And then they land amidst the rubble and Beast Man's like back up on his feet, ready to go. You know what's funny is my reincarnated version of Beast Man here. He's just like a hairy kind of werewolf creature and he has no clothes on. So I got little indications of his little balls hanging down there. Like seriously, <laughs> I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to go for it. I'm not going to make anything graphic, but if it's an appropriate panel, there might be some hanging beast man nuts in the panel. <laughs> I've had female nudity in my book. I can have some version of monster male nudity, right? <clears throat> well, thanks, Binka. I appreciate that very much. with Tila's reverse bunny suit. Well, let me do a little doodle real quick in case anybody's curious. I doubt anybody is. I already scribbled on the back of this page. If anybody knows what Tila looks like in the original um, cartoon, she had a full on like sort of armored outfit, but the sorceress, her mother in the original cartoon, the eighties cartoon, um, her outfit Rob's just going to do a quick sketch. Yeah, you're right, uh, Daniel Good. Why they call him Beastman, for sure. Um, forgive my super sketchy doodles here. But um, as far as a, uh, like a female figure. Um, the original sorceress's outfit. She's 
She had like this bird gear on. She did have baby making hips. But in the original cartoon, the sorceress's outfit was like a blue outfit that kind of comes up like this all the way up to her neck and then down her hands to her, you know, all the way down her full sleeves. And then she had like a, like a swimsuit crop. So it was like dark up here on her arms and then white and then her bare ass legs. And then like the traditional boot things. And then she had a, a bird cloak. And so her daughter that has taken over the role of sorceress, I've removed, I've eliminated the headgear and kept this same basic, the white and then the dark in, but in mine, it's black instead of blue, but instead of being cut at the hips, like a swimsuit, the white just continues all the way down. And then at her upper thighs, it becomes black again, all the way down. Kind of like that, if that uh, makes any sense. No cape. So it's just kind of like a spandexy outfit. It becomes more superhero than, you know, fantasy. So it's like, so just white in between here and then dark up on the top and then dark like that. That's kind of the uh, redesign-ish of the sorceress's outfit on Tila, just more streamlined because I wanted to. <clears throat> what was up, Antoine Dennison? Might be time for me to go make dinner here shortly myself. I'm definitely going to have to get back to the drawing table in a little bit because I got pages to make and they are not. My self imposed deadline is creeping up really fast. Minka, what am I eating tonight for dinner? You know what? I'm not sure, but I've, I've mentioned this recently that I've uh, gone on the carnivore diet where it's basically, uh, you know, steak, eggs, and some seafood and water. So it's either some version of ground beef. I've actually found these kind of pre-made hamburger patties that are pretty damn good. I've had them the last two nights in a row, but I do have some uh, ribeyes in the fridge I got to cook up for uh, their expiration date, which is actually um, it's today. So I, uh, I am going to go cook me some ribeye steaks because Antoine Dennis, you said you've been preparing to start streaming again, but you're damned if you can think of anything to talk about. I can see that. 
Um, you know, it's kind of easy for me to like, well, I talk about comics and I draw, so I'll just get on here and just start doing my thing. And the uh, conversations seem to find themselves. But yeah, I get what you're saying. Like, what the hell am I going to talk about? Yeah, Minka, enjoy steaks, butter, eggs, bacon. Yeah, that type of stuff. Um, it, uh, yeah, you're going to burn off body fat like that. So I, I started on the 11th of last month. And um, I'm, I, I mean, I do my weigh-ins on Friday, so we'll see tomorrow morning what it looks like. But I'm down basically 16 pounds. And the one interesting thing about it, Antoine, you're talking about a couple of folks have suggested that diet to me in order to lose this weight, this last 20, um, is I'm not doing any like calorie counting. I'm eating as much as I want. Um, but um, it, it gets boring because you know, might like that stuff, but then you're like, I've just, I've had it. And it's all I've had. Then you see somebody having like a freaking you know, a five guys burger and fries and a shake. And you're like, God, that's a, a nice sweet shake. Sounds good. I hear, I hear people talking about like their cravings for sweets go away and I'm still waiting for that. But, um, I've definitely noticed a difference and I've lost weight without exercising or calorie restricting. So, yeah. Antoine, you say you can think of things to talk about. You're all, you're so politically incorrect. You've already, you sold me. All right. Now, now you have to start doing it, man, because I want to listen to some politically incorrect conversation. There needs to be more politically incorrect stuff because I'm sick of the, the politically correct part of it. You can't talk about this. You can't say that. Fuck that. It may not be nice, but now I'm going to just because you're telling me I can't. Yeah, see, Mika, but yeah, Mika, yeah, 16 pounds down, man. Like, I've got a belt. I mean, I'm a big guy, you know. Um, I'm not the biggest guy you've ever seen, but I'm, you know, I'm 6'2". I can't remember if I'm 6'2 or 6'3. Honestly, I know that sounds stupid to not know exactly how tall you are. I'm a tall guy, but I'm a big guy. But uh, my belt that I'm wearing, I, I, I've had to cinch it up tighter, like, it's either two or three notches and I actually need to go up another tighter notch. And there is not, a, there's not another tighter notch on my belt. I'm at the end of it of notches to tighten it up. So I need to either need to like puncture a hole through it or just go buy a different one. So it's uh it's boring, but I've found that it's, I get filled up easier on that type of stuff. And I'm just, it's more about the discipline to just, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I'm going to have this diet. I'm going to go for it. And that's that. Salt helps. Yeah, there's that. Um, and trying to say people used to call me a world war two German soldier, but then I started showing my face and they just started calling me an uncle Tom. What the hell? <laughs> <clears throat> Dan, you've drilled an extra hole in a belt before. I think I need to. Usually it's like, I'm like, goddamn belt doesn't fit me. It's too far at the other end because I'm too goddamn big to fit into it. But now I got to like, um, yeah, I got to I gotta put another hole into the damn thing to make it tight, tighten up around. Because I'm on my feet all day at work. I work at Home Depot in a receiving department. So, you know, I'm moving, picking up pallets and moving things around and etc etc I almost started singing here on camera for just a minute. I was playing the uh, soundtrack to the uh, original Footloose movie. And um, I just kind of saw it on YouTube randomly. I'm like, oh, yeah, I haven't listened to that in a long time. And then I like played it like three times in a row. I think my coworkers are getting sick of my shit. 
but I've got the original Footloose soundtrack music just playing in my head like nonstop. <laughs> <coughs> Antoine used to work HD in freight. Yeah, the night crew, freight, that hard concrete floor. When I started, um, I remember for a couple of days when I started, I was hobbling around. My girlfriend at the time was like, what's wrong with you? I'm like, this fucking new job, walking on this concrete floor, going from a job where I was sitting most of the time previously. But uh, it was no joke. But eventually just kind of got used to it. And of course, having good shoes helps. Yeah, that was 18 years ago. I've been at the damn company 18 years this last December. It was my 18-year anniversary. <clears throat> D-Man, you just watched uh, Footloose last night. It's a good show. And I, as weird as it sounds, that remake they did a couple years ago, I actually didn't mind it. I feel like they did as good as could possibly be done in terms of like a... Uh, like a reimagining. I it's not better, but it wasn't bad. And twenty say you left a week before the HD profit sharing. They said I forfeited my money because that is some bullshit, man. Uh, yeah, 18 years, I should own it by now. I mean, yeah, I've seen it all. I've kind of been through it all. I'm not interested in going into management because that just sucks your life away. They just want to own you. I mean, they pay okay, but I don't know. I'm kind of doing fine. Gives me opportunity to make it big as a YouTuber now, right? <clears throat> I know D-Man remakes, but in the world of where it, it could be done kind of okay, the Footloose one was kind of okay. That guy that they got to play, Ren, was no Kevin Bacon, but, uh, I mean, who is? But the girl that played Ariel was pretty good. It's into it. Ariel. But yeah, since I've been listening to the music, now I want to like actually go watch the movie. Maybe I'll do that when I'm making dinner. <clears throat> yeah, management has its perks, but you got to put up with so much shit. Especially at Home Depot, like they own your ass. You work nights, you work weekends, you work mid shifts. They'll tell you, "Hey, we need you in tomorrow with things coming." The the big guys are walking the store, so you got to be in here, and we got to blah blah. I'm like. No, I just work in receiving. I have a set schedule. I've had it for the last four years of uh, Monday through Friday, 6 to 3, you know, 6 a.m. to 3 in the afternoon. And it lets me have a life with my children, especially since I'm divorced. I don't get to just come home and be home with my kids. I don't have them. So having a set schedule lets me have them on a consistent basis during the uh, on the weekends I get them. And then it lets me have them, you know, for a couple hours during the week and get to have as much of a, a relationship as with my kids as I can now that me and my, their mom are separated. <clears throat> well, guys, I, I might uh, shut this down here. Um, gonna go get my dinner going but uh yeah i think that's it for tonight but i'll be doing one saturday night and um i gotta see if i get someone who wants to join up with me on saturday night because jessica she's uh heading out of a 24-hour road trip out of state to go see some family for like a week and a half so jessica's not going to be on for like three straight shows. <clears throat> Celtic sea salt. I got two types of salt, uh, Minka. I, I, I got these very, one's a very thick, um, God, I can't remember what it is, but um, yeah, I did get two types of salt that uh, 
this carnivore diet guy recommended. And it's good stuff. I like it. And Dan, thanks. Uh, uh, Ghost Agent stuff was awesome. It was fun. Uh, yeah, that book was, you know, it's, it's fun to see it printed a year and a half after I drew it. But uh, yeah, uh, I'll catch y'all guys. Uh, I'll try to put up announcements sooner than, um, uh, yeah. All right, Antoine. Yeah, maybe we can do that if you're if you're uh, if you're interested. Again, it'll be Saturday night. We usually did it at like ten o'clock, which is super late. I know, but we, we could we could chat. All right, guys. Thanks. <laughs>